Triana reached land within an hour of leaping from the warship silence. The coastline was dark as Brianna searched for any source of light. Her feet reached the sandy coast of Dawn, but she remained shoulder deep in the surf until she could discover the nearest inhabited fishing village. She trekked for miles along the coast, utilizing the surf as cover for her nakedness. Brianna thought of her mother. Lady Arya would appreciate her escaping her captors, with nothing less than clothes on her back, unarmed. Still, she hovered in the darkness, as dangerous as any other creature in the sea that night. She had been submerged for hours as she approached the first village. The skiffs tied to the docks were unmanned. Brianna would peer into the boats, attempting to recover anything she could use to cover herself and attempt to blend into the populace. Brianna heard a fishing net being cast in the early morning hours. The waterline was up to her chin as she turned towards the early morning fisherman. It was a boy no older than twelve. Brianna's feet sank deep into the mud as she silently approached the dock. With both hands over her head, she grasped the rotted floorboards of the dock to pull her upper half out of the water. It was just high enough to see inside the smelly fishing skiff. Inside she could see bait, nets and paddles, but no cloth. Even a burlap sack would suffice at this point. Hey, you thief! The boy shouted and Brianna lowered herself slowly back into the water. The boy made his way quickly back to the dock after his nets were cast. Brianna took a deep breath as his shallow water boat met the dock. Brianna's face submerged as she stared at the boat's underside. The boy peered into the water, clearly looking for her. He leapt from his skiff onto the dock. Before landing properly, his bare feet slipped on the dock. In less than an eye blink, his foot rose higher than his head, which cleanly bounced off the dock before splashing into the water. He sank, bleeding from the head. The boy did nothing to attempt to swim to the surface. His body remained limp as bubbles ceased coming from his nose. The boy was unconscious and drowning. Despite being underwater, Brianna could hear shouting coming from the docks. A large man was shouting for the boy. Perhaps they were family, a father and a son, perhaps a mother and a sister. Brianna was conflicted. If the boy drowned, she could keep her cover. If she saves him, she would be defenseless, naked and at this man's mercy. Brianna took the gamble and collected the boy from the mud. Her head broke the surface as she shouted for what she assumed was the boy's father. The older fisherman's face was blank. He looked terrified of Brianna, almost to the point he forgot about his son. Brianna pleaded with the man to pull the boy from her arms. Slowly he approached her, almost fearing she would strike him. The man slowly overcame his fear and pulled the boy from the water. He lay the boy on his back and shook him by the shoulders, always keeping one eye on Brianna. The man wailed to the gods to not take his son from him. Still, the boy refused to breathe. Brianna was confused. Every sailor she knew was trained in resuscitatory breathing. The boy's lungs were full of water, no doubt. The man turned to her with terror in his eyes. Can you help him? He pleaded, and against her better judgment, Brianna pulled herself from the water. Brianna crawled towards the dying boy. His father stuttered backwards, terrified of the naked woman who pulled herself from the water. Brianna lowered herself and placed her mouth upon his. She gave him a sharp, deep breath. Once completed, she rose to her knees and pressed quickly and sharply upon his chest. Two or three rounds and the boy began violently coughing. Once he attempted to raise his head, Brianna withdrew to the opposite side of the dock so the father could comfort his son. The father cradled his head and noticed a fair amount of blood on his hand. He should be all right. He's going to want to sleep. But he should try to stay awake as long as he can. The fisherman looked confused as his son expelled the remaining water from his lungs. Brianna sat upon the dock, legs and arms crossed attempting to cover herself. The father worked up the courage to speak to her, and his words eventually spilled from his mouth. You can... you can speak. Brianna looked shocked and probably appeared insulted as she responded without thinking. Of course I can speak, sir. He looked her up and down with suspicion. Rumours were mermaids could not speak. They stalk fishermen and drag them beneath the waves to consume them. Brianna laughed to herself. She forgot how superstitious fishermen and sailors could be. I am no mermaid, sir. I am the lone survivor of a shipwreck. 
Has any others from my crew come ashore? That is exactly what a mermaid would say. Do ladies normally abandon ship without clothes? Brianna was tired of this nonsense. This father was obviously not a threat to her. Brianna rose to her full height for all to see, her arms at her sides. The father still had doubt in his eyes while cradling his steadily breathing son. Sir, do you see any fins, gills or scales? The father looked her up and down. He saw her fully. He wasn't lusting, but Brianna could see the embarrassment fill his face. Now that's out of the way. Could I bother the good father to trade his son's life for something I could cover myself with? The father then stood and removed the blouse from his back and wrapped it around her, avoiding taking in her form any further. Rest easy, daughter of the sea. You are safe here. Allow me to tend to my son and then we can find you proper covering, and perhaps a meal. He offered and Brianna sighed in relief. It was a short walk to the fisherman's cabin, two rooms, a wood stove and a humble table. The son lay upon a bed of straw, not taking his young eyes off of Brianna. In return, she gave him a wide smile, and the boy returned it in addition to a deep blush. The father re-entered the room after lighting a candle in the small bedroom. The name is Timothy. The boy is Arel. We thank you for saving him. I'll need you to teach me that technique. Timothy realized how that sounded, once again becoming nervous and stuttering. That sounded too... I didn't mean to assume... Apologies, young lady. The boy's mother passed some years ago. Her things may fit you. Please help yourself to some privacy. There is a pitcher of water and a knife bedside. Please hold on to it while you are here, if it makes you feel safer. Brianna was touched. He was concerned for her own feelings of safety. She simply nodded her head as he began filleting sea bass on the small table. Brianna quietly closed the door and ran for the pitcher. She drank deeply and finished it completely. Her thirst was stronger than she realized. Timothy's shirt stunk of fish and sweat. Still, she was grateful. An old chest was opened. Luckily, Brianna found the garments in good shape and fit properly, just plain enough to not attract the attention of Old Town street folk. Once Brianna emerged from the bedroom, Timothy and Arel were seated at the table about to begin a late breakfast. He offered her a plate and Brianna smiled to herself as she ate with her hands. Something not commonly done by a princess of King's Landing. Where was your ship to port? Old Town. Are we far from it? Brianna spoke openly with her mouth full of sea bass. She was rather enjoying herself. Tiamathy sighed, seemingly thinking deeply regarding her destination. He gestured to his son, and Aurel promptly rose and exited the room, still a little unsure on his feet. Now it all makes sense. The Ironborn warship passed us in the night. You escaped naked and shivering. You were a salt wife, were you not? He accused, but his tone was kind. He almost sounded as if he pitied her. Brianna just hung her head in feigned embarrassment and refused denial. So I thought so. You saved my clumsy son's life. How may I assist you? Timothy asked, and Brianna's head rose to meet his eyes. You've sheltered, fed and clothed me, my friend. But if it's not much more trouble, if I could barter passage to Old Town, it's of grave importance, sir. A horse is worth a year's wages. You won't find one for miles. But Aurel can take you via the intercoastal waterway. But I must warn you, the Greyjoy warship was headed that direction. Timothy paused, realizing that is what she desired. It's not worth it, young lady. Revenge. Find somewhere safe. A good man will find you. A welcomed thought, but I must reach Old Town, sooner rather than later. Brianna pleaded and Timothy agreed. As soon as Aurel is steady on his feet, the pair of you will depart. You should arrive by sundown. Timothy smiled as he rose to his feet. He removed a long black cloak hanging from behind the door. He offered it to her as she returned his small fishing knife. Timothy looked relieved that Brianna no longer saw him as a threat to her, nor her to him. He refused to take it back as Brianna then stored it beneath her dark cloak. An hour passed and Aurel wrapped a dark bandage around his head. His bleeding stopped from the cut on the back of his skull. His skiff was loaded with supplies and stores, likely to be sold in Old Town. 
The sun was high in the sky and Timothy came down to the dock to see them off. Thank you, sir, for your assistance. I don't know how I could have managed without you. I hope to return your kindness someday. Timothy smiled as he offered her his hand so she could board the skiff. He untied the line and made eye contact with her. Does Milady need a message sent to the capital, perhaps? He asked with a smile, and Brianna's face dropped in horror and worry. Brianna stuttered as she forgot she had never mentioned her name to either fisherman. Brianna's look of worry probably communicated all Tiamathy needed to hear. No, not to worry, Lady Brianna. Your secret is safe here. Princess. <laughs>